Freshman and sophomore. Okay. So right now we do know, what we do know, especially about vaping, is that it is as much of a problem as people are saying, it truly is as much of a problem as people are saying. So it's not just here, it's everywhere I go. I'm primarily in Middlesex and Monmouth County, but I do go throughout the whole state. Um, this week alone I got um, asked to go to Union County, I got asked to go to Essex County, so every school right now is really struggling with this phenomenon going on and through this I'll kind of tell you why we think we're in the situation that we're really in um, with young people in this. So just kind of start off so we have a baseline. First of all, the average age of first use in New Jersey is nine years old. But in Middlesex County we're a little bit higher, we're 14. But that's that eighth to ninth grade, we know transition years are a huge spike. So we do know, I would like to think that nine is just because maybe somebody's at a party with their family, they take a sip of alcohol and they get their first chance. But we do know the average age of first use is nine, which is quite young. We do know that one in five of us know someone, so even in this small group, that's at least one of us who knows the most someone has substance use disorder. So we're really trying to, to destigmatize substance abuse disorder or addiction because we do know that it's very common and a lot of us will have to deal with that in our lifetime with someone who we really care about. We do know that if a young person has one parent with a substance use disorder, they have 50 times, uh, 50 percent likelihood of having a substance use disorder themselves. In both parents, it goes up to 90 percent. And so it's a really important discussion to have. If that's a family history in your household, your child may be more susceptible to to the students sitting next to them just because of them and history alone. This average age year of 15 is really, really important. We know that youth who use before the age of 15 are five times more likely to have an addiction issue with that substance. So why is that important? Their brain is growing just as fast as their body is at this time, and so dopamine is a natural feel-good drug that's in the brain. Every time you take a chemical, and you give it a false sense of dopamine, it changes those messaging systems just a tiny bit and actually changes the chemistry of the brain. And so it tricks the brain into thinking that it needs the substance to feel good rather than the natural dopamine now. So lots of times kids will say, hey, listen, they say, I'm going to go drink. I'm going to go to a party. It's going to happen sometime in my life. And the answer is correct. I wish I could look at all of you and say that, you know, if these things came up, one of the students do, I would say that it's when. At some point in their young adult life, it's going to be when are they going to be faced with these decisions. And so when it's when, I always say the longer you can wait, the better your chances of not having to have a substance use disorder. So 
wait as long as you can before you try a substance. And that's always going to be my message to any student that asks me about substances. We know that the brain stops developing at 25. That is why in our state, we're very progressive in our state, and we've got a lot of bills, regulation, rules in place to try to help young people get as close as they can to that age before they are legally allowed to put substances in their body. So to drink alcohol, the legal age is 21. How about if um, we become a recreational marijuana state? It'll be 21, okay, to use that to purchase. And how about any of these devices, big devices and or fluids? It's 21. So we were 18, went up to 19, and we now change the law to 21 in the state of New Jersey. So we're one of the few states that have 21 and over for any tobacco and or vaping related to proper products. In New Jersey, we have a little bit of hope in the law. It is a purchasing law, not a possession law. So if a young person cannot purchase it until they're 21, but if they have it legally, there's not too much um, you can do because it's not a possession law. Now, for some of these of you, I'll, I'll go through them with you you can see them, but these two are refillable devices. If they were out in a car driving and or were out in public, a police officer could stop them for this because this is also considered drug paraphernalia. And then, really important to have this discussion with young people too. We know that 60% of people who have a mental health issue also have a co-occurring substance use disorder. Now, why? Because we know that sometimes when people are dealing with mental health, they try to um, numb out of it and or self-medicate themselves. We also know that some people turn to addiction, to it, to the you know substance use because they don't know they have a mental health and they're not understanding those feelings. So they often go hand in hand. Um, we know that there's a huge spike in mental health with young people. Drastic spike, especially from eighth to ninth. And again, when we're going from senior year to college. And so those are really the important times to say to a kid, if you're not okay, it's okay to say you're not okay and to have that discussion about mental health. Problems. Lots of parents ask me where are they getting it from, how do they get it? Well, this right here online, it's a credit card, it's not a gift card. And so often if your kids are lucky or blessed, when holidays come, birthdays come, we say give them a piece of gift card so they can buy something, get them an Amazon gift card so they can pick something out, online use your credit cards. And most of the sites do not even have to have an 18 year old check. It can just be, you go onto the site and order it, it's delivered to your home without most people even knowing know it. Amazon, some of the products up on this table came directly from Amazon purpose we've tried to see if it would work. So again this is why. And this little guy here, does anybody know what that is? That's Snapchat. So Snapchat, that app is how they're using it in schools. So they're using social media in schools to make meeting times in bathrooms so that they can sell the products to each other and coordinate time and efforts. So in one middle school that I'm in, they are selling it one to two inhales for a dollar or two dollars every time they go to the bathroom. Now, lots of times we've been doing it in case of the jewels, so this pod pack here might cost you know fifteen dollars for the whole pack of pods. What they're doing is they'll coordinate and meet and sell each pod for ten dollars. So those who are selling it are making a ton of money. But they use Snapchat and social media to meet and coordinate time and efforts to do those. Can I just say something? Yeah. Um, just with the Visa gift cards, I've had kids who got cash. So, you know, parents get, getting this information would say, okay, I'm not going to give Visa gift cards. They give cash. Then they go to the convenience store and buy the gift card, and then they can go online. So, I mean, it's really, you do your best, but it's really hard. So we always say we recommend that you get it to a place, like to a place. If they really want to get it, could they use... Say you got them a movie gift card, could they sell that movie gift card to someone for it? Yes, they could, but it would narrow down for those who are not thinking that far ahead of it. Um, but yes, they could. As hard as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's all I say. Just make that part of Put as many barriers in place as you can so they can't get access to them. And a lot of parents just don't realize that they can get anything online, and you can get anything online. Most of these, even if it's said, you have to be 21 to purchase. All it is is a clip that's a very 21 and you can get and then you're in the site. They don't have to really, really do the math to figure out um, the age. So in our short time, I will only cover these two things up here, the electronic inhaling devices. 
Um, they used to be called ENDS, and the Electronic Community Delivery Systems. We now call them electronic inhaling devices because we know that they're using marijuana concentrates in these products. Okay. We also, you, you know, everybody else, kids call them big pens, e hookahs, uh, jewels, fixes, flares. They all have different names. Internally, all do the same stuff. We'll talk about that. And then I'll talk about marijuana, not pro or against, legal or not more just an understanding of the concentrates that they are using in these devices and also if we become a recreational marijuana state we also become a concentrate state and an edible state and understanding the difference between them is, is super important and um, i will cover concentrates because we've seen a huge spike in new jersey um, also of these synthetic marijuana that are so let's kind of break this down this is a traditional cigarette these two are e-cigarettes they look like cigarettes, they only have nicotine flavored in them, and they're made by cigarette companies. These in the middle here are one-time use devices. What that means is once the fluid in the device is gone, you throw the whole device out. About $15 at a convenience store gas station. Now, if you look at this here, okay, one of these is a vape, but two of these are actually just pets. And so if this was in your child's backpack or even on their desk, you probably would look over it and not think twice about it. This is actually the vape device. That's where the term vape pen came from. What's important is lots of young people will say, listen, I'm just going to try one of these. How bad can it be? And it's important when you look at the box. How many puffs does this have? 800 puffs. So we know scientifically it only takes 100 inhales of nicotine to become addicted to nicotine. This one has 100 inhales. 800. So eight times the amount that would be necessary. So en enough for one kid to try it and become addicted to nicotine. Then we have here the refillables. So I showed you two here. So how these work is you need fluid to put into the devices and or marijuana concentrates to put into these devices. Those all come with chargers. The chargers will look very different um, and I'll go through those charges with you. Then I call these like the 2.0, the next generation of, of big products that have come out. So the Jewel is the one that everybody talks about, hears, and understands. So this is the Jewel. It looks just like a USB drive. If you put it, um, you know, next to mine here, if this was a black one, it would look almost the same. Again, easily concealable. Most parents, educators don't even notice it. That charging device is really simple. This goes right to the side of your computer to charge. Now the pop, this you need the pods with it. These are what the pods look like. The pods will go internally into it and enough to be built on the top. These pods, you want to see the colors. Jewel right now is having a backlash with the federal government a little bit. I'll explain that in a minute. So, but just like we have Coke and Pepsi, this one here is the fix, and there's a flare. They look almost identical, um, but those are definitely their competition, and they're going to become very popular. So, schools I'm in already, these are more popular than the Jewel. But these, uh, these are all over too. They're actually cheaper than the Jewel system. This one here is very popular. It's a Sorian Drop. One that I have looks just like a highlighter. Again, if it was some backpack, you might not think twice how they use it. I have a tiny hand, but they can put it in their hand here, and they will sit in class and they will write in class they can use it in between their fingers, and they will go into their um, shirts so that when the teacher turns their back, again, it would be easily. And the other devices we have that are becoming super popular are these that are like the size of a credit card, super thin, can fit in a wallet or a pocket. Again, the math that's built into the floor. So how they work, best example, best uh, thing I can give you an example of is like a humidifier. You put the water in, you plug it in, and then the mist comes out. So internally, you put the fluid into it. The battery coils heat it up, breaks down the fluid to super small particles. We say vaping, but it actually breaks it down into an aerosol. So it's even smaller. That is why when someone exhales, there's a big plume very quickly, and it dissipates super quickly. That's why even though schools are on top of it and doing all of their best, if there's 50 kids in the hallway walking and someone uses it, 
and exhales, by the time the adult even got over to it, it would be gone, it would be hard to trace exactly who it is. That's why they can also view them in class. They'll breathe into their shirts, they will breathe into their bags, they'll look like they're looking at something in the backpack, or they will just exhale, and by the time the teacher turns back around, it would dissipate. Part of the reason why we're in this situation right now, I do not think that young people um, are stupid, and I don't think that they don't care, I just don't think they have all of the correct information. And it, it's taken us a while to get ahead of the curve here, but understand, these two here are smoking apps from the 50s, where doctors and dentists recommended, and it's, it's not harmful, it's safer. <coughs> this is an ad for this year for me. Same exact kind of marketing techniques. If you ask young people if they would use a cigarette, they will tell you, no, I would never smoke a cigarette. If you ask them if they would vape, they go, oh, ish, yeah, probably. They don't have the same, that it can, it's harmful, that there's anything that could hurt them. And when you talk to them, that is the answer they would tell you. It's better than smoking, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's safe. Um, after today, hopefully you will have more information that you could have that conversation with them. Here's some more advertising that's out there. Friends of left friends buy cigarettes, uh, if you love your lungs, vape. We know that there's an actual lung disease directly linked to vaping that is not linked to traditional tobacco. Um, we also hear Juul. I told you Juul kind of got a little bit of a backlash from the FDA. If you look at their advertisement, all of them look like kids in high school, so they're very young. Plus, what they created is something techy that kids would be interested in. So the FDA said, we do not like the way that you market your products. If you continue to market towards young people, we will sue you. So to play nice in the sandbox, what Juul has done is from now on moving forward, the cherry, the vanilla, the creme, the mango, all of those will not be sold in stores. You can only get them online. The only thing you can get in stores is nicotine and menthol flavored. And we actually had a press conference two weeks ago that they're trying to ban the menthol flavor as well for all vaping products. So there's a lot of, this is ever changing. Literally every day there's new information out. But that is why right now Juul is kind of harder for kids to get, or at least the fruit flavor kind, and so they're moving to those fixes or flavors. Just so you can understand, when Big Tobacco got in trouble eight years ago, certain regulations went into place. Things like they cannot advertise on the radio, they cannot advertise on TV, they cannot have billboards next to schools. The only thing on TV you can see is the anti-smoking ads. Um, they can't use cartoon characters. All of those things were put into place because we know that young people were marketed by Big Tobacco. When we're talking about vaping, none of that is in place. It's kind of like the wild, wild west. Um, and they can have ads on the radio. Like for Jewel ads on the radio, you can have ads um, on TV. One of my co-workers saw one on CNN in the middle of the night the other night. So also understand who invested in this company. $20 million to the maker of the products. So big tobacco is definitely 100% involved in this too. For the first time in US history, tobacco sales decreased, but they tripled. And so this is a billion dollar industry. Again, if you ask your kids who Joel Campbell is, they have no clue. We know because we grew up with him. Now it's banned. They cannot do that. This is a vape product. This is a vape product. And this is a vape product. You can see all of their techniques. Um, I use this one in particular, Pancake Man. You see the cartoon character. It says on the side, no egg, water, milk needed. And even on the back, in this box, you get a sticker, a button, and a keychain. None of us would need a sticker, a button, or a keychain. Um, look at some of the flavors here. What's here, this would look like? This is cinnamon toast crunch. It looks just like cinnamon toast crunch. Um, this candy here, it's called vape pen, which is like um, airheads candy. And what candy does this one look like? Sounds Sour Patch. Okay, and yet marketing directly towards young people. One in three high school students have used the product. I know lots of times when we look at statistics, we say, well, everybody's doing it or not a lot of them are doing it. Talking about vaping products, we know a lot of young people are trying and or using this on a regular basis. We've had a huge increase in poison control calls also because a lot of these bottles are not childproof, they're coming from overseas. This fluid in these bottles, if you get the fluid onto your skin, can go through your skin into your bloodstream and it can actually get nicotine poisoning that way. You don't have to ingest it. But a lot of these look like candy. If you have younger siblings at home, if you go to school, you know that it's not candy. 
and they can open the bottle, they will open it and smell it, try it, even taste it. This woman will know it who says, I love candy. It has not, no reference of vape, and it looks like candy on the bottles. Pets also have seen huge increase. Nothing is regulated, and that's the most important thing to have in this discussion. Lots of young people will say to me, does it get 0% nicotine? I say to them, is it really? Because I don't know that. How do you know that? Um, there are no regulations. We were supposed to start regulating in February of 2018. It was pushed back to 2022. So the devices are not regulated and or fluids. So whatever they want to say in the boxes, they can put, um, delete, not, there's no regulations. Even the devices, Think of it as like the hoverboard craze a couple years ago. Some were fantastic, some exploded. Some of these devices where there's an incident in California, we're not hearing about it here because there's no massive recall to, to protect it. So there's lots of, of problems with those devices themselves. In Freehold Mall over the summer, we had a purse explode. About two months ago in New York, the young man had his device in his pocket and exploded. He had to see to fix his life um, from the explosion. So it is happening. We've had our first U.S. death from a device in Florida, a metal shard into uh, an adult male's neck, and he died from injuries. So they do happen. Um, this site is a great site. Um, don't get big in. It is a site that has everything vape related that's possibly out there. But it just also has a video of all of the explosions and, and after effects of devices not much. So here's another big argument we get that it's just water and flavoring. There's nothing bad in it. Um, that's an argument we hear a ton. And again, with these kind of things, they look like candy and fruit flavor and dessert. The flavoring itself um, is linked to this disease called popcorn lung, it's called diacetyl. So the flavoring itself can be very harmful. And here's the thing, we don't know everything. It took us years. I wish it was like big tobacco where I could say 4,000 chemicals, 200 cancer causing, and list them for you. It took years for us to get that information for, for regular tobacco products. It'll take us a long time once we even start regulating. So lots of the information we get are from smaller research studies from universities and or hospitals or medical organizations. What we do know for sure is this is what's in the fluid. Most importantly, there is formaldehyde in this fluid, which is a cancer-causing agent. So when this fluid is being heated in these devices, it's turning into formaldehyde, which is then being ingested. We also know that there's two to three other carcinogens that are present in most of the fluid. We do know that there's lead found in them. A lot of these bottles coming from overseas do not have the same regulation. So the lead is in the bottles, Food sitting in the bottles and the food is being ingested. This diacetyl is a flavoring agent. When you ingest it, it does not do the same thing as when you inhale it. And then finally, the nicotine content. Um, we are creating a whole new generation of young people who are becoming addicted to nicotine. A big argument that a lot of administrators or parents will have is why would kids bring a device into school and they know that they can have severe penalties? And the answer is because they're addicted. How many of us know someone who sold traditional tobacco products and it's five degrees outside and they're outside school? And when you become nicotine, it's as addictive to, in your brain as heroin and cocaine. Most young people do not realize they're already addicted, but that is really what's happening. And how much nicotine is in these products? So this is a jewel pod. Uh, in one pod, it's a pool into a pack of cigarettes. So that's nicotine. We have some high schoolers who do it two to three pods a day. It's a ton of nicotine that young people are ingesting. When we're looking at this bottle here, this is a 30 ml bottle of fluid. On um, the box, it says six mg's. Most of us would think that means six milligrams of nicotine in the whole bottle. What it actually means is per milliliter or per about 20 drops. So if you go to this refillable, this is one ml where my thumb is. You see, it's not a ton of liquid. Okay, so when you're looking at this whole bottle, this whole bottle is equivalent to 6,000 puffs. 600 cigarettes or 30 packs of cigarettes in this bottle of fluid. Maybe not the same thing. Who and what are they marketing to? Again, I just want to drive home that this is definitely a marketing term for you. For you. Um, this, there are some entertainers that have kind of jumped in the bandwagon, and young people are, are 
interested in music and also celebrities who are attached to that. This one here is being toted as a dietary aid, so lots of young girls and boys, but lots of young girls in, in high school are more worried about body image and self-image. This right on the box says lose weight, curb cravings. Um, so don't eat a cupcake just big bit and it'll you know, help you lose weight. Here, um, this looks like an albuterol inhaler. It's actually a vape, $65 online, you can purchase it. And here, um, there's a site called Vaporware. That looks like uh, the string of a hoodie that lots of young people like to chew on. That's actually the tube. So you can inhale from the tube. Um, that site here, Vaporware, they sell everything. That stuff is not expensive. That's the other thing. Um, a sweatshirt on there can be $20. But they sell sneakers. They sell tons of stuff. Here's what happens when you look on it. Just by clicking, you verify that you're 21 years old. I hit enter, and that was my verification. That was my verification. I hit enter. The craziest thing on that site that I've seen is a drawstring backpack. So the little um, strings that the kids, you know, those backpacks they wear, the string is actually the tube. But it's a two-way valve, so you can inhale and you can exhale back into the bag so no one ever sees the, the actual That's the greatest thing on that site. But they have every kind of thing you can want on there. Social media also plays an important part of this, and, you know, especially for middle school, real big. But this is the actual National Vape Summit, so they have a competition of how much they can exhale and what kind of tricks they can do. Young people watch YouTube all the time. Lots of parents are not aware of everything they're watching on YouTube. And that is stuff on YouTube on how to exhale doing tricks like that. And here is that chemical diacetyl. When tested, 51 of the fruit flavor, dessert flavor, 47 of them had it in it. And so it is called popcorn because when my great popcorn first became a thing in the US, the factory workers started having a breathing issue that no one had ever seen. It's from the fumes of this diacetyl. What is happening is a long-term consequence of traditional tobacco smoking is emphysema or COPD. It affects, this popcorn lump affects your alveola and your airways with increased music. It's a very much like an emphysema-like disease. Unfortunately, what we're seeing is kids who start vaping in high school by the time they're 20 to 21 years old are contracting popcorn lung. This is an irreversible disease. It will be a long-term lung disease that they will have to live with. Here's some more side effects. Dry mouth. Um, understand that nicotine grows naturally in tobacco products. None of this has tobacco in it. So this is all synthetic nicotine. And so we don't know every single chemical they're using to create this nicotine. But Google has created, in particular, and others have followed suit, something called nicotine salt, which was added to their, to their flavorings so that when you ingest it, you will not have the negative side effects of nicotine. So that burning in the throat for high levels will be decreased, so that would make you want to adjust the most. Here's just some things that if somebody vaping, what you would see. The chargers all look very different depending on what you know the product is. But again, if you see chargers that don't look like traditional chargers for things, that would be a cocktail sign that it's for a vape device. And here's just some signs of nicotine poisoning. And more importantly for, for us as adults, that that nicotine in the brain also causes more drugs, other drugs to feel more pleasant in the brain. Um, definitely things like methamphetamine. So again, are we increasing our chances of other drugs to be more pleasant? Any questions about vape products? No? Okay. Take a breath. I see your face. That's why I said like in the beginning. When we know better, we can do better because I know it's a lot of information um, thrown at you and it's overwhelming, um, but if you have any questions about it, please just let me know and I will. Um, I will, another trend that we're seeing right now in uh, middle school and high school is young boys walking around with bath and body products to mask the sweet smell of these things. So I will pass this right at you now to just pull it out because if you pull it out, it, it'll, um, it can leak. But you can smell where it how sweet it is. Yes. I just wanted to add as well that you know, if they're, the marketing of this is really significant, what we used to call e-cigarettes, now they're vape, calling vaping because e-cigarettes, kids know, cigarette sounds harmful. Now they're calling it vaping. I saw a sign when I'm on my way to here on Route 9, there's, it's Pine Pen. 
Yes. And it's a vaping product, and it's called Kind Pen. So, you know, they don't think, this is all really brilliant on their part, that they're really trying to make it minimize, you know, the, the appearance of harm. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm basically okay. Okay. So, when we talk about marijuana, what's really important to know is we are not a recreational marijuana state yet. Um, it, it could be a possibility for New Jersey. Um, this is not going to be legal or not legal. It's just a reality of most um, adults do not realize that if we become a recreational marijuana state, we're not just talking about traditional marijuana. We're also talking about concentrates becoming legal and edibles becoming legal which are inherently a very different situation than traditional marijuana. So traditional marijuana, the, the mind-altering substance is THC. When we talk about concentrates, you'll see how high those uh, THC levels can be. But I look at Colorado. Colorado was the first state that made uh, recreational marijuana uh, legal. And just alone, when we're talking about it, we're really looking at adolescents for us and our company. We look at it as a public health issue, especially for adolescents because their minds are growing very differently than an adult brain and be affected very differently than an adult brain. So Colorado youth ranked number one in the nation for past marijuana use since it became legal. We also know that it was there 55% higher than the national average for marijuana use. Um, and again, just think of it, alcohol is normally the first drug of choice it's in people's homes. And kids don't have, it's not a big deal, you know, my, my parents do it. It's in your home, it's going to be easily you know, accessible. If you become recreational marijuana, the kids will have access to it much easier than they do. So let's talk about edibles, because again, when we talk about marketing, you can see here how much kids would be drawn to these products. And again, if it wasn't in your home, it could it be in someone else's home? If it becomes legal, yes, very easily. So you'll see here, there will be THC soda, there will be THC candy, there will be THC cookies, all of those things will be accessible and, and made possible in the state of New Jersey if we become recreational marijuana. So what's important? The biggest thing when I'm talking to young people about edibles is that serving something matters. And I know we try to tell them that when we talk about nutritional value, but when we talk about THC infused candy and oil products, the serving size is really important. So how many of us have ever had a Hershey bar? Yes? And if I pass them all out to you, how many of you would only eat one square? <laughs> Not many of us, right? Yes, we all laugh. Um, one square of a THC infused candy is equivalent to 10 to 15 milligrams of THC, which is a joint or a blunt. When you're looking at the whole bar, it's 100 milligrams of THC. Your body can only you know, handle so much THC before there becomes an issue. So a big argument for young people is you cannot overdose for marijuana. And in, in all terms and consequences, yes, there's an effect level and an overdose for every drug. That window when we talk about edibles and concentrates is much smaller. So will they overdose? No, but can they poison themselves? Absolutely. So let's think about this. The other thing that's important to know is when you inhale marijuana, the effect is, is pretty immediate. When you ingest it, it can take up to an hour to feel any effect. If a young person or an adult uses a THC infused candy bar to feel an effect, and in a half hour they do not feel an effect, what will most people do? Yeah. Eat another. And now they'll have 200 milligrams of THC going through their body, and their body will start to shut down. Okay. In Colorado, they have now been put um, big red triangles on all of their edibles because they had such an increase in poisoning, especially in young, um, young people in Colorado. So they've gone kind of backwards. They did it and then they kind of came back and said, we need to switch this up. And this is the concentrates. These concentrates are used in these big devices. So you have, this is uh, butane hash oil. This is butter, wax, shatter. They're all a little bit different, but they are all concentrates. The best way for me to explain shatter is if it's a, kind of like you took a jolly rancher and you dropped it and a little piece would fall off. That's what it's like, a hard crystal like. Um, the wax is a little thicker and butter is a smoother consistency. Where a lot of uh, people are hiding these are in the birds please wax lips container. They put them in those containers. There's also dabber. So this is a dabber. Um, it's not the, the, you know, the game of dab. This is a dabber. And what that is is a transporting device 
from the concentrate into those devices. So it's just something that they use, but if you saw a product like this, that would be consistent with the concentrates. So they put these concentrates into these refillable devices. The high heat from the battery will melt that concentrate down into something that they can account. What's important to understand is that these products, again, traditional marijuana, 10 to 15 milligrams of THC. Some of these concentrates go up to 90% of THC. The side effects are completely different than traditional marijuana. Hightimes.com, when I was in high school, it was a magazine. Um, we're now a YouTube channel, so why I say that to you again is many uh, parents let kids look at anything on YouTube. This is a channel that will tell them anything marijuana related, all pro marijuana, obviously, that's their, their their slant on it, but it's important to understand that lots and lots of information is available on YouTube.
to know as parents or educators is that those terrapines are the smell, that skunk smell. If you ever been to PNC and saw a concert on lawn, you know this is the smell that I'm speaking of. That smell is decreased greatly when we talk about these concentrates. So someone could be using it and not have that traditional skunk smell attached to it. It's much easier to hide that smell. Um, finally, I just want to cover synthetic um, marijuana for you. Here we'll talk about the fake marijuana or herbal mixture, pot curry. This is, um, so you understand, nothing THC or marijuana related. It is a plant-based material from um, overseas that is sprayed with chemicals to mimic a high. Why is that important? Because of a traditional urine screen, this will not come up. And so lots of young people who might not try something because it's illegal, this is not illegal. You cannot sell legally in the state of New Jersey, but I promise you that there are places that do sell this. Um, lots of little bodegas, and it'll say not for human consumption on it. It'll say that it's plant food or incense, so that's how they get away with selling it. Um, but understand that it's also available online very easily. Why is that important? We know up at Rutgers, we've seen a huge increase in Robert Wood Johnson Hospital. Um, so this is definitely close, you know, we're not too far from there. Um, we also know that these are just more packaging of what they look like. What's important to understand about synthetic marijuana, no THC, no marijuana, no illegal substance. So what happens is once a DEA says that a substance is illegal, back at that, back at the <coughs> lab, they'll take out that chemical compound and put another chemical in it, and they'll just continuously change the chemical so it always continues to become illegal. Here are some of the symptoms. What's important to know about herbal mixture or synthetic uh, marijuana is that we've seen it cut with some pretty dangerous things. So we've seen it cut with fentanyl. Fentanyl is the drug that is um, normally attached to heroin, so when we see clusters of heroin overdoses, it's really the fentanyl that's in it. Fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. We've seen in um, Connecticut in August, we had 78 overdoses in one day for synthetic marijuana, all laced with fentanyl. In New York City over the summer, we saw a lot of dysesthetic marijuana being laced with rat poison, which was causing internal bleeding. So again, you're no knowing of what it is going to be cut with. Um, just so you can understand fentanyl, this is a lethal dose of heroin, this is a lethal dose of fentanyl. But it is very common in New Jersey. Uh, we had a meeting last month with uh, some police DEA. Um, this is going to be of the new wave, even more than heroin, it's much cheaper um, and it's uh, much more potent. So, you know, like I said it's about 100 times more potent than morphine. Um, but since fentanyl, we've had an increase of 2,000% increase in death since it's been introduced to New um, If you're interested just to know, it's a, it's a cool site if you're a geek like me and certain things can excite you. This is a really cool site, it's called New Jersey Key. New Jersey Cares. It's a real-time dashboard, and I'll tell you all the opioid-related information that you need. Um, in last year, to, from January 1st to February 3rd of 2019, we had 240 overdose deaths, right? And in, this is how many naloxone administrations we had from January 1st to November of 2018. We had almost 15,000 Narcan kits. And then this, from January 1st through January 15th, so in 15 days in 2019, this was the amount of opioid prescriptions that was written in the state of New Jersey. Opioid do the same exact thing in the brain as well. It's a direct. Um, when I talk to young people, the biggest thing, especially now, I do a lot of pre-prom presentations. Having this conversation with young people is important. We do have the 911 bill in the state of New Jersey and the Good Samaritan Law. The 911 bill states that if someone is somewhere where there's a party going on, they're not 21 and there's drinking involved, if someone there with, has alcohol poisoning and is not coherent, if they stay on the phone with authorities to call 911, when the authorities get there, they themselves and the person they are helping will have no civil or criminal charges right up against them. The Good Samaritan Law, two problems. If you are using the illegal drug, someone you know is someone you're with is using the illegal drug, they overdose and are incoherent, and you call the those an illegal substance, again, no civil or criminal charges will be brought against you. In turn, also, if you had an arcane kit and you narcan someone who you thought was overdosing, you could have no charges brought up against you, um, civil or criminal, you can try to help someone. And just a couple of things that are kind of there so you understand. Carfentanil, fentanyl is a bad enough carfentanil. 
um, traces of it in New Jersey, but definitely we've seen it in Florida, Ohio, and other places. Car fentanyl is 10,000 times as potent as be a single grain the size of a salt can kill you. So that is being kind of introduced into our system. Um, in New Jersey, um, lots of kids will say just marijuana. My answer to that is isn't. Um, often the marijuana that is being sold is laced with heroin or also fentanyl. Again, understand that if you come to me recreationally for marijuana as a business person, you're going to come once or twice. If I get you to get heroin, you will come to see me every day. Um, there's a new thing, a new product right now. These nicotine toothpicks are becoming pretty increasing. Again, remember we talked about nicotine addiction with vaping. We're cutting down the school on, on these products. Kids are needing that nicotine fix. These are toothpicks that are sold. If you stop on them, it will release nicotine. If you bite it, it will give you a jolt of nicotine also. So some schools are seeing an increase in kids walking around with toothpicks. Kratom right here is a plant-based material from Southeast Asia. It is sold legally, um, but it gives um, lots of people who are suffering with heroin. Um, substance use disorders say that it helps with withdrawal symptoms. Young people are using it to feel the effects of, of getting hot. Okay, but again, these are sold in these um, wellness stores that are popping up. They often have freedom, so it's easy to, to purchase. And then um, Zanny bars are, are, are a <coughs> big thing with a lot of high school, college students and their Zanny bars that are created illegally. Um, we had a bus in Mount County, Mount Park, here, 400,000 Zanny bars, all these That's my information. Last thing that I just want to kind of show you up here to understand. Again, some of these products were purchased right off of Amazon.com. This looks just like an Arizona tea can. It's weighted and you come from Chile. This is actually a snatch can. These are sold in six packs. Um, we had a huge increase in prom times for these. This um, looks like it doesn't look like you know, it's actually glass. But more important, not just alcohol. These things can also fit into them, you know, and be concealed also. Then, um, Narcan kits are available throughout the city of Jersey. There's lots of trainings that are available. Hopefully you will never need one, um, but if that's something you're interested in, please know that those are things that can come out and train you. Um, this is probably the craziest one I've ever seen. It has Oreo cookies in it, um, but this is actually... <gasps> Oh. And this would be your this is what I suppose. We get a lot of these things purchased right at Amazon.com. Um, there is a short survey up here. If you feel inclined to do so, that would be fantastic. I will let you come up and look, ask questions. I do have some important handouts. This is probably the thing we're most proud of, um, this is our whole card that explains what detox, inpatient, outpatient is, all the numbers you would need that we need if not patient workers, so there's safe sites, um, and then just some handouts if you need. But thank you so much. Glad you guys came. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's the thing. Don't go home and, like, you know, have a bad kind of freak for that. It's more just kind of like, hey, listen, it's a conversation. Like, this is what's out there. This is real. This is what I learned. You can become addicted to. It's not, you know, I know people say it's safe. It's, it's not safe. It's, there's definitely anything attached to it. This, this is what's amazing. Is like, this is what's amazing. You can know, yeah. yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. have fun. And like yes. so far, mm -hmm. so I mean, like, I mean, like, it that yes. yes. that's the thing. That started with the design, the cereal, the design, the design. So a lot of the things, um, I'm not sure what the parents would be included, but things that we as parents wouldn't know, mm -hmm. where they're just part of this, where it's like right out in the open, and you don't know. So if you know, if you enjoy tonight and you got something out of it, Please come back in two weeks. You get a flyer or somewhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah.